Welcome guys to another T-Rex talk. Today we're gonna to be covering a topic that quite a few people get into and that is gray man theory. Uh, basically to sum it up, it's the concept or the idea of being camouflaged, hidden in plain sight. Uh, usually this concept is talked about for working in urban environments, looking like a civilian when you are indeed a uh, barrel-chested freedom fighter, Rambo, sniper, scout, demolition, Navy SEAL, UFC fighter, whatever it is, but you're trying to look like the average Joe, the average person, Bruce, not Bruce McClain, John McClain. Why was I thinking Bruce? I don't know, Bruce Wayne. Yeah, 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 John McClain. You know, any of those sort of gray men operating as a normal human, as a normal person. Uh, so there's a few things I want to talk about. There's a few misconceptions and there's also some just little things, uh, obviously with firearms, handguns, uh, concealed carrying, and then rifles. How do you carry a rifle? Uh, how do you transport rifles around? How do you not draw attention? And I want to cover some of that. But with that said, I'm going to kill this Instagram live over here and you guys can come over to YouTube to watch it. Boom. Delete video. Gone. All right. So the first one that the, the biggest mistake or misconception that you see with the gray man sort of or the or the gun industry sort of concept is you'll see these uh, these big guys, these big tatted up bearded dudes, instructors and stuff who love to talk about gray man theory. They love to talk about blending in. But the reality is they're not doing it themselves. They're still wearing multi cam hats. They're wearing certain kinds of clothing. Uh, they have a certain uh, physique or a certain sort of uh, air about them that does not lend to being concealed either. I've had conversations with guys, obviously this applies to working internationally, where there are some guys who just can't work in certain countries or go to certain places because they can immediately get pinpointed as a you know, an SF dude or, you know, as an American, and it just doesn't work. Like they can't blend in. But here in the United States, if you're someone who wants to be a gray man, uh, there is, you have really nothing going against you as far as that. Being here in America in an English speaking country, it's very easy. Uh, my biggest tips right off the bat are you probably don't want to open carry a handgun because that kind of outs you right off the bat if you're tr trying to get people to not recognize, you know, that you're carrying a gun. Um, and then also not wearing, wearing uh, firearms related uh, clothing, um, camouflage, you know, full uniform, unless obviously you have to because you're, you know, in the service, um, or certain bags. Uh, the biggest mistake I see people doing is they, the backpack that they pick for their like everyday carry and they're trying to blend in. Uh, it's in fact a molly covered uh, tactical bag, which everyone right off the bat knows, oh, only gun people do that. Uh, the other biggest mistake that I see is people slapping stickers on their pelicans. You see them going through the airport, they're sort of trying to blend in, they're wearing normal clothes, uh, but their pelican is covered in Remington, Taurus, Ruger, Glock, all these stickers which clearly, like, you're done at that point. Like, you've already, you, you've given yourself up. Everyone knows what you're about, everyone knows you're carrying guns, uh, and just everyone uh, notices that. Now my big thing, kind of, kind of rewinding, the whole gray man theory thing, the concept is usually discussed for uh, special operations guys who are working in environments where nobody there can know that they're there, right? But this concept actually uh, applies equally, in my opinion, uh, to regular citizens here in our country. And as politics and other things potentially go downhill, uh, where certain things that we like get targeted, uh, it is possible a little bit more hiding may have to happen, a little more hiding in plain sight. You know, maybe people not realizing we're gun owners, but in fact, we're carrying a gun on us, have a rifle in our car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the whole concept isn't something that is just reserved to the military or special operations, SOCOM, any of that. Uh, this concept of hiding in plain sight as a average citizen or as a partisan fighter, as a guerrilla fighter, whatever, uh, this has to be thought about by average people. Uh, it has to be thought about by the average gun owner because there will probably, there has been times in history where our particular group of people is uh, targeted by certain, you know, uh, groups. And I think we're going to be seeing more of that here in the future for sure. So this is something that ever, the average person needs to think about. I think about this quite a bit. There's a reason I wear slim jeans. Uh, there's a reason I don't wear multicam. Uh, there's a reason there are certain clothes and certain bag companies I don't buy from because once you start combining all those, uh, you get picked out like a sore thumb. So before I get into some of that, I'm sure there's all sorts of questions and whatnot. This is kind of going to be an open-ended conversation. 
Uh, and I have a bunch of bags and examples and different things here. This is an Everly stock bag, which is constantly out of stock because you know, that's just how it is. Uh, but this is really important stuff, especially depending on politics and kind of how the future goes, of course. All right. What do you mean our people? Uh, gun community, uh, specifically. But Christians, I'm a Christian, and Christians have also been a greatly targeted uh, in the past for all sorts of things and current. So there's also that. But I'm talking the gun community as a whole, uh, for sure. So you guys kind of stick out everywhere. Yeah, so there's a couple things. So like I went to Europe three years ago. This is like another part of like gray man theory or whatever. So I went to Europe, I think it was like three years ago. Uh, Charles actually went over there too. And uh, I didn't want to wear clothes that were specifically American. I didn't really want people to pinpoint me as an American. We were in Hungary and Belgium. Uh, so I actually went and found a uh, jacket that was a little more European. It actually came from London uh, to wear while I was in Europe. I didn't want to, I didn't wear a ball cap either. Um, which is fairly American, especially depending on, you know, what kind of hat you're going to wear. But I didn't want to stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, if you go to Russia, well, you can't smile or right then they know, you know, you do not smile in Russia. R Russia smiles at you. Uh, there's just some countries and cultures and stuff where it's just not going to work. Um, if your, your ev everyday clothing or your normal stuff isn't going to work in that place. Uh, but here in, in the States, there's obviously not as much of that, uh, which is great. So gray man theory. For those of us here in, in, in the United States in particular, uh, dressing like an, a regular civilian, a regular citizen. So the question is, well, based on where you live, what does that look like? You know, I'm young, I'm 27 or 28 now, and people generally my age are wearing slim jeans. They wear button shirts and or, you know, other stuff. I like to wear a little more like I guess, hiking kind of, you know, clothing, which does work. You know, you go to an REI or something, everyone's wearing like stuff like this. Um, I'm not trying to wear anything super macho or uh, tactical. And I just walk around, you know, downtown Nashville or wherever, and nobody looks differently at me. Nobody considers I have a gun on, nobody, whatever, because I look like everyone else on the street. And that's kind of the goal. You blend in with everyone. We've all seen it. We've all seen the tactical mall ninjas who wear the baggy 5'11 pants, the fisherman vests, uh, quadruple pistols, NRA hat, you know, there's just certain cues that right off the bat give you away. And I'm personally not someone who, you know, originally when I was like 20, 19, uh, I, I would say I was more like 19. I actually liked the idea of open carrying a pistol because, you know, it's kind of cool. You, know, you got a gun. That's how I saw weapons back then. I had a friend who open carried a lot and I thought he was pretty cool. Um, but as soon as I turned 21 and could actually like carry a gun, I was like, you know what? I don't really want everyone knowing I have a gun staring at me. I've got to be extra vigilant because I'm open carrying a pistol. Like, I don't like that. I would rather be concealed and people have no idea. Um, and I think I've only open carried uh, once or twice since then, uh, just like getting out at a gas station. I've got like my war belt on or something with my pistol and I just eh, do my gas and leave. Uh, I think I've only open carried like twice. Um, I guess with the exception of uh, when we went to Franklin during all the riots and stuff, we had full kit for that. I guess that's technically open carrying, but a little different. But um, open carrying is definitely part of that part of the uh, sort of gray man uh, concept. Bags is kind of what I brought up earlier is another big one, uh, tactical bags. I personally don't like getting bags from big companies that lots of people recognize as uh, firearms related companies. So Vertex and 511, like sorry Vertex, but the problem with being a low vis uh, company, you know, if you get so big that everyone recognizes and uses your bags, you basically out everyone. Uh, your, your bags that you say are low vis aren't low vis anymore if you get that big. So one of my favorite things to do actually is to go and buy uh, standard bags. This is just a Puma backpack that I got on Amazon for like, I think it was like 30 bucks or something. Uh, and this actually can contain a broken down uh, Mark 18 in it. I, just, I had some videos, we filmed some videos yesterday of that. Uh, I have a suppressor in here and everything else. And then the front pocket can actually hold this Eagle Industries active shooter bag, which I've also used in some videos lately that holds two rifle mags, medical, whatever else that I need. And this totally normal backpack that, you know, normal folks run around with, that's also dirt cheap, like 30 bucks, um, does not look like something that everyone from a gun show or everyone from SHOT Show or the NRA convention is using. And I think that's something a lot of people forget. Like if you're trying to find something that blends in with everyone, don't go buy from gun companies. Like, go buy from a mainstream company that makes a bag that mainstream people use, like duffel bags, backpacks. I got some really cool um, uh, packable duffel bags. They're in this little pouch, and then they expand into a full duffel. So you could like have that somewhere, quickly make it, you know, expand it, throw all your kit in there, and you're done. 
And so thinking outside of the box is really a big part of gray man theory. It's not, you know, doing what everyone else is doing and buying the same bags. The problem with this bag right here, this is the Everly stock cherry bomb bag, is you know, if, if I get this bag and then you know hundreds of people see the videos, they go and get this bag and it starts to be more mainstream, well now this isn't really low vis anymore because lots of people can recognize it. And you know, law enforcement can recognize it, other guys, people in the know recognize it. If it gets mainstream enough, regular people will recognize it. And now I've kind of eliminated the, the low vis factor of this particular bag. And that is the thing that happens. You basically out yourself You're, as a company if you get too big. Jansport. Yeah, I've got a Jansport backpack in there. Holds an MP5. Great. Uh, totally normal bag. Buy normal stuff. Uh, the other thing I do with 511 bags is I cut the tags off immediately. So this is an awkward, kind of an awkward bag uh, that I picked up. They don't make this bag anymore. This is the 511 I don't know what it's called, but the first thing I did when I got it is chop all the tags off. And people originally, when they heard me say that, they thought, oh, well you just, you know, they don't sponsor you and that's why you're cutting their tags off. And I'm like, no, I cut their tags off because 511 is such a big gargantuan empire of a company that people who aren't even tactical know what 511 is. You know, you got CrossFit, not everyone who does CrossFit is a tactical person, but everyone in CrossFit knows 511 because the CrossFit plate carrier they sell, and it's, it's you know, they're just such a mainstream brand. So the first thing I do is I cut the tags off. That's a little harder with like the pull tabs that have their little, their little like little sight bullseye thing. Uh, but that's like the first thing I do if I get a bag from a prominent company, or even like Vertex, I'd probably cut their tags off. But some of their patterning is very like Vertex-y. Um, this bag right here can hold an MP5, which is pretty cool. So I have a, and, and the way this opens is kind of awkward, but I actually have an MP5 in here. Uh, with a first spear uh, MP5 little satchel that it can hold five magazines, or in this case, tourniquet suppressor, three mags, and then the gun. But this particular bag, based on how it is shaped, uh, because it is 511, uh, is not super low vis. Um, it's it's a little awkward looking. Y'all would probably agree with that. So what I would rather do is go and buy like a, a normal backpack from a normal company, and I'm good to go. Uh, bags like this are super cool. Uh, Molly has become a lot more mainstream. So this is a mystery ranch bag. They do a lot of tactical stuff, obviously, in military contracts, but um, they put Molly on a lot of their bags and Molly does show up on more mainstream bags now, but I generally try to stay away from Molly uh, anyway. If I'm around in public, like I just try to avoid it. Uh, so this is their like one of their like tri-zip bags. Um, so yeah, I love buying bags from, you know, non-gun companies. Patagonia is actually a, uh, I think they're a, they're a pretty anti-gun company, even though they make all the like Patagucci stuff for SOCOM. Not to say if you make things for the military, you have to be pro-gun. I mean, there's, uh, there's gun industry companies that are anti-gun who sell the military. Like we get it. Um, uh, but this bag actually holds this, uh, Glock 17, uh, USW build. Uh, really nicely and then I can have a suppressor, uh, multiple magazines, whatever I want in there. And this bag does not look tactical. It says Patagonia on it. They're not known for being a tactical company. So it definitely blends in and is way more gray man than some of these other vendors out there. So let's get to some questions. Skateboard bags. Yeah, skateboard bags are pretty cool. I don't, actually don't have any. Uh, I want to say this big 511 blue bag, which the unfortunate part is like, again, I'm not a big fan of buying 511 because everyone knows what 511 is. but. Uh, this, they were one of the few companies that made a bag long enough uh, that would that wasn't like super huge and like fat and massive uh, that would actually fit my Scar 17. So this bag right here, which I can walk around in hotels with and do whatever, um, I actually have my full Scar 17 in and uh, suppressor, mags, all that good stuff. And I can walk around with this in public if I had to. It wouldn't attract as much attention as a standard like rifle bag but that's also not like a normal looking bag. I would rather put it in a duffel or something like that. Duffels are great. What about a guitar case? Uh, guitar cases are really cool, although they also kind of then they attract too much attention because then people are like, oh, do you play guitar? And you're like, yeah, I do. And like, can I see it? And you're like, well, no. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. Like you want stuff that doesn't attract attention at all. And a guitar case, um, I guess if you had like mariachi clothes on a mariachi hat, maybe you wouldn't, you know, and they'd just be like, whatever. So, I don't know. Uh, tennis bag. Tennis bags are great. Don't have any here. Those are great. Hockey bags. Yep. Same thing. Those are, I want to say those get pretty long uh, for sure. Uh, my favorite bag actually, and this is definitely the most gray man of uh, all of the bags I've gone out and bought. And I bought this one at Target, provided I can find it, which fits my MP5K great. Again, going back to Ultimate Gray Man. 
is this Fortnite bag. Now, you guys are like, okay, Lucas, you're out of your mind. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Uh, no, if I have this in the back seat of my car with an MP5K in it, and for whatever reason, someone breaks in or looks in, they're not going to think, man, I really want to steal that awesome looking $20 made in China Fortnite bag. Like, man, there's probably some really good loot in there. No, nah, they're not going to think that. They're going to be like, that's disgusting, stupid. Fortnite's for children. I'm not going to steal that bag. Um, so yeah, this is probably the most gray man, low vis backpack that I have for hiding a weapon inside my car, such as an MP5K. Uh, I could probably break down a 300 blackout into this, the lower from the upper, uh, and put whatever else I need in here, and no one would think second about it. They would just think, wow, Fortnite's for kids. Whoever that person's driving that car is a moron or whatever. And that's fine with me. Because part of Gray Man is you don't attract too much attention. You're literally like a second thought, and they just walk on and do their own thing. So this is probably the most low-vis bag that I have, uh, and it cost me like 20 bucks. You don't have to go spend hundreds of dollars for low-vis tactical bags. It's one of the most, uh, the biggest misconceptions out there regarding low-vis. Um, people are like, oh, I gotta go buy this bag that this instructor made that he put his name on, uh, and it's $250. It's like, that's not going to be low viz after, you know, six months, everyone's going to know what it is. So you could totally, uh, you could totally um, think outside the box on that. One thing that I've done is uh, I was at a hotel, this was a while ago. I told a story on Instagram on a live I did earlier. Took all my bags up to the room, came back. I still had my 300 blackout or whatever gun it was uh, on the trip. I didn't have a real good way of carrying it to the room because I'd already taken all the bags up, so bad operational planning. Uh, but I had garbage bags, so I literally just stuck it in a garbage bag and just carried it up through the hotel uh, in a garbage bag. Um, you don't, again, have to have a super special rifle bag to transport weapons around without people knowing. Um, I know people companies love to sell you on that, and you don't have to do that. Now, with that said, I would love for T-Rex Arms to make rifle bags or low-vis bags, but I would have to make them in limited runs. I've already thought through this. I would make them in limited runs. I would never make the same color twice because I don't want a ton of the same color floating out there, and I would probably change the design as often as I could. Uh, and I know Vertex is doing a much better job at that where they'll have a, have a colorway and then they'll ditch it and they'll move on. So there's not just a ton of these like FDE bags floating around. That's really the only way I would want to do low vis bags would be like, here's 500, once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, here's 300 and in this new color with non berry compliant, non US made materials because they, they're, they, they're not gonna be that tactical. Um, canvas, wax, whatever. Once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, 400, once it's gone, it's gone. So like these are bags you, you will rarely if ever see used by other people and they're just out there in very small quantities. That's how low vis bags, in my opinion at least, should be made. Uh, not in these like tens of thousands, all the same color that people are gonna start recognizing and seeing. That's kind of my uh, philosophy behind like the gray man carrying rifles uh, kind of stuff. So, uh, PCC or rifle for gray man theory and bags. So PCCs, sort of the, the era of submachine guns is pretty much over. Um, high level units are not running around MP5s like they used to. They're building out 300 blackouts and other similar rifles. Uh, the reason 300 blackouts awesome and why it's one of my favorites is you can have a tiny barrel, you can have a tiny profile, but still have a lot of lethality and way more lethality than you know an MP5 with a pistol caliber. Because pistol calibers generally suck at stopping people. That's why people have rifles because rifles are totally awesome for that. Now the benefit of a pistol caliber, like if you're going to build out a, a, pistol, ca a pistol caliber carbine, um, don't do a 16 inch, uh, don't do an 11 and a half inch, because at that point you could do a 5.56 or a 300 blackout. That's where you want to do something tiny like an MP5K. Like that's the only time those guns have a whole lot of practical use outside of competition is when it gets tiny, like, an a uh, like the BNT APC 9K or whatever it's called. If you're not going that small, do a 300 blackout. 9 inch 300 blackout, 6.75 300 blackout. In one of these bags over here, I think it's this one, I've got my new, I really, I'm not supposed to, <laughs> we're not supposed to show these, but <laughs> oh well. Um, this is a, I'll just try to show just the end of it. Ta-da, no, 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 that's, this is good. You see how short this is from here to here? This is a 6.75 300 blackout barrel uh, with the suppressor rail going over it. So this gun ends up being about the same length as a full MP5 with the stock collapsed. But I have way more lethality with this gun 
I can shoot distance with supersonic ammo. I can shoot subs up close. It's super quiet. There's no reason for me to have an MP5 if I can have something like this. Or even a gun that's unsuppressed but with a short barrel like this. 300 Blackout's great if it's unsuppressed. You don't have to suppress it. So the answer is no, there's not a lot of reason to do 9 mil uh, PCC like carbines when there's stuff like that available. Now it used to be the argument was ammo cost. Well right now not really. Um, but yes, that can be a thing if 9mm was super cheap. So, uh, CZ Scorpion. That gets pretty big though. Well, it, it can get fairly condensed, but it's about the same size as that still. The inner blackout is the way. It really is. Uh, the new PSA MPX clone. Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. Uh, channel nuked in 321. Now, I've showed guns on here a few times, uh, but you, yeah, you're not necessarily supposed to, I don't think. But then again, they don't want you doing all kinds of stuff. So, uh, your thoughts on attaching fake brand labels to more tactical bags. It's actually a super good idea. Um, like if you took a template for Nike and you spray painted that onto your Vertex bag, uh, go for it. Uh, I think that's actually super smart. People look at it and they don't think anything of it. They're like, oh, Adidas. Oh, okay, who cares? Um, that's actually a great idea. I might actually consider doing that because it definitely takes attention away from, oh, I've never seen that bag before. What is that? Ooh, it's like gray and there's Molly on it. Oh, he's got a... Uh, uh, you know, a three percenter patch on there. Oh man, he's one of those guys. You know, like, like some of these people, they're like, I don't want attention, but I totally want attention. <laughs> so funny. Um, they're in blackouts garbage. Yeah, I think there's a lot of cool guys who disagree. Um, what's the shortest you go with the 556? Five, five, so there's a bunch of companies out there that for this, and this whole this thing is spreading. The low vis gray man concept for civilians, citizens is spreading, right? Like 10 years ago, this was not a thing. Like this was for like select units doing select stuff. No one really talked about it. You didn't really have eat good ways of doing short guns. You didn't really have pistol braces. 300 blackout hadn't caught on. Uh, but now there's a lot more uh, better technology, better options out there. More companies making bags. Companies like 511, as much as I gripe on them, have tried to make some of the stuff a little more low vis. Uh, Vertex as well, some other companies. Uh, Everly Stock, I mean, they literally have this cherry bomb bag that can fit all kinds of cool rifles. That does look, I mean, they literally have, uh, this is what I appreciate about them. They got bright orange on here, right? Very not tactical colors on this bag, uh, but it just helps take away from it being tactical or all black, right? Um, that's why I like this one a lot because it does look pretty, pretty normal uh, having bright colors on it. Um, let's see, what was I, where was I? But yeah, barrel length. There's some companies that have come out with like the Maxim PDW, 7.5 barrels and stuff. They're really great to conceal in bags because they're tiny, but the problem with 5.56 as a cartridge is it was designed to do the majority of its damage with the uh, temporary cavity it creates when it hits uh, tissue. Uh, the, so you need a lot of velocity with 5.56 for it to really be effective, 2400 feet per second plus whatever. When you start dropping below a 10.3, according to Crane's research and a bunch of other people, you start to lose that temporary cavity that can disrupt organs and actually do damage to actually like stop a threat. So that's why legit folks generally don't go below 10.3 because they know 5.56 you know, at that point is pretty sucky. So I highly recommend staying away from shorter barrels than a 10.3 unless it's something like a 300 blackout that's designed to be shot in a shorter barrel where you can still actually do some damage because that bullet is obviously a little bit bigger so that's cool i do have a 8.2 inch uh, bulgarian crank and uh it's cool but ugh. so i feel like gray men are starting to stand out a absolutely absolutely to, to, i mean if, if you try too hard to be a gray man by getting all the gray man kit uh, you're right. Uh, what you have to do is actually be a completely normal person. Uh, there's a reason I don't wear Solomons anymore. Because uh, everyone in the tactical world wears Solomons. Uh, I go and find shoes from no-name companies people don't know about or Adidas. I wear Adidas, right? Like, I don't even wear Solomons anymore. Uh, the T-Rex hat's great because only people really in the know know. Uh, but I also have like a tier tactical hat that looks like the Jedi Academy logo. Uh, that again, it doesn't attract any attention uh, except for people being like, oh, Jedi, yeah, cool. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, totally. But it's like a tier tactical hat. Um, but yeah, no crazy flags, multicam, none of that stuff. Even Arcteryx, if you wear, if you combine Solomon's tattoos, beard, Arcteryx, uh, you're basically totally an operator. Only probably not, but you basically are totally an operator. Sorry, Chad. You gotta lift weights too. Yeah, you also have to smash a ton of weights and eat a lot of food and be like, brother, brother. Yeah, 
around. So just don't do that a whole lot and it's, you'll be fine. So anyway, um, <laughs> so it's good fun. It's good fun. But this is important. I do think this is important stuff for people to think about, um, especially as things change. So um, politics. So um, thoughts on travel internationally. Well, it sucks right now. I've actually got to do some uh, here at some point. Um, <clears throat> well, then uh, your definition gray man is wearing 511. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, there's some places like the Pacific Northwest where there's probably some clothing stuff they do there, obviously, because I've been up there, that is very different than what people do here in Tennessee. So it also does depend on where you live. Like if I go to New York City, uh, if I'm nice to anyone uh, up there, uh, I'll be pegged as a Southerner and they'll know I'm not from around there. Um, there's just certain things in certain places where if you don't do what, what those people in that area do, uh, they totally know you're not from around there and you immediately get called out. So there's definitely a lot of different cultures uh, around the country, although it's definitely not as, as uh, the difference isn't as big as like when I was in Africa, obviously I stuck out like a sore thumb. I'm not from around there. I didn't have a South African accent in Kenya, you know, um, I'm obviously an American, you know, in Africa, there's really no way of getting around that. So. So, uh, APC 9K with uh, classable stock is perfect. Yeah, so those those little guns can be super cool. But again, it's it's nine mil, so eh, I don't know. Uh, HK 433s haven't been in here yet. Um, you're welcome. I splitted zero. I appreciate that. Thoughts on masks? So, I don't like the whole mask thing going on right now, and the mandates and the stuff that's that's circumventing the way that politics and law is like supposed to work. But on the plus side, uh, masks are a great way of hiding your identity, obviously. Lots of people do it every year. Uh, so, hey, that can be kind of fun if there's still some cultural, like, uh, it's acceptable to wear a mask. Or maybe maybe you're looked at sideways in a couple of years for wearing a mask because you're one of those people who, you know, cares about the, you know, the pandemic from, you know, 2021, 2020 or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, masks can be kind of fun uh, because, you know, you hide your face. That's kind of cool. So, that's kind of fun. Um of carrying in California. Uh, I was in California for a work trip and uh, I had two of my guys with me and as the CEO of this company and their boss, it is my obligation to protect them. So I uh, hypothetically, uh, very likely had a firearm on me the entire time with uh, standard capacity magazines because uh, 10 rounders are dumb. Oh, unless you're shooting something like a SCAR. I did actually go out and specifically get 10 round mags for the SCAR for prone work. Uh, so I had to buy California mags for that SCAR and that was kind of, it's kind of dumb. Uh, just shooting 580 yards yesterday. Um, I want to say about 600 is about as far as I've gone so far, but I was shooting 580 yesterday. So expand on politics. Well, basically if there's a, bun a bunch of essentially in the sh in short, uh, let's say there's a bunch of executive orders regarding uh, certain kinds of weapons, uh, certain kinds of accessories, uh, carrying weapons. Uh, let, let's say, for example, hypothetical scenario, um, there's a bunch of civil unrest and your state or your municipal or your whatever decides, hey, no more carrying rifles in your vehicle, no more carrying rifles in public. You, rifles are a no-no. Um, if something like that happened and there was enough unrest, I'm definitely still going to have a rifle with me. So at that point, I'm actively trying to hide the weapon, most likely, or at least make it so it's not super noticeable. And that's where all this is going to come into play. Bags and certain stuff that people will not recognize as possibly containing a rifle. Uh, now, we haven't necessarily gotten that far yet with the politics and some of the, I would say, some of the, um, I don't want to say oppression, but some of the, just the, the, the political pressure. But it's definitely something that could happen. You know, certain bans, uh, certain mandates, certain emergency powers that prohibit us from actually being able to carry the arms that we need. And that's where hiding it and having it is actually, you know, a thing that regular folks have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So it is definitely something to think about ahead of time. Like we don't have to do all this crazy stuff right now necessarily. Uh, I don't have to hide all this stuff necessarily right now. I mean, I go into McDonald's with a saw in the passenger seat of my Forerunner, and I don't care. Because, you know, I'm in my county, uh, they kind of know who I am, and I'm in the patron state of shooting stuff. So I don't have to hide that I have a saw with a belt in it 
you know, ready to go just in the passenger seat. I don't have to do that right now. But in 10 years, five years, that could be a totally different story. I may not be able to do that. I may need to break my saw down in a duffel bag in the back of my car with a spray painted uh, Wilson logo on it. And all for, you know, people have no idea what's in there, but there's totally a saw with a ton of ammo with a suppressor. So, you know, um, just how it is. You got to think through this stuff. Huh. Do you think they will actually ban pistol braces? So Isaac's got some political content he's got coming out soon. Uh, we had a congressman here, Congress, uh, Congressman Mark Green uh, from Tennessee was here at our shop. Uh, I think it was about a week ago. He filmed an interview with him where he says some pretty legit stuff. You guys will really appreciate it. And I definitely appreciate it too. I'll be perfectly honest. I heard a congressman was coming here. I don't know much about him. And I was like, ah politician like okay like whatever um but after hearing him and being able to ask him some questions and his interview i was like oh this guy's pretty cool actually like i forgot politicians can actually be cool and care about the people he's also not a career politician he was a night stalker a surgeon um a bunch of other stuff um he's only had a couple terms in politics so it's not like he's been doing that his whole life um but super encouraged by that so that's super cool i just got that coming out soon it'll probably talk about his, his content will probably talk about braces a little bit uh as well so it is what it is Stop buying from Amazon, guys. Uh, look, the, the, the best money that you can save and that you can spend is going to eBay or Amazon and buying your cheap low-vis uh, duffels and backpacks off of those stores that are mainstream. One of the best things you can do as far as being low-vis and gray man. It's great. Uh, do you always have a plate carrying a helmet with you? I do not. Uh, that is something that I think on occasion, is this being propped up by this bag? No. On occasion, I was playing with this. We did film a video. Ugh. So this is a Mystery Ranch uh, duffel. And I've talked to a guy a while ago. He might even be in here, I don't know. Um, he was involved in a situation in another country and had his ready bag with him, something similar to this, uh, that did have all of his kit in it. He had to go put it on, because you know it was a situation. And we talked about that. But this is basically what he had right here, a bag that was nondescript with all of his kit ready to go. Uh, there's a time and a place to have that. I don't always have full kit everywhere I go. Um, I like having the option of being able to do that if I need to. So in this Mystery Ranch duffel bag, again, you could get any duffel bag for this. I have a Mystery Ranch because it is a little more durable than like a cheap duffel bag. Um, I probably need something a little more low vis because Mystery Ranch is known for a lot of their uh, hunting slash carrying rifle kind of bags. But in this one, I do have an AC1 with side plates, ready to go, all that lovely stuff. I do have my op score, uh, ballistic helmet, because hey, why not, you throw it in there. I have a thing, a thing. I have another thing. This one's got a collapse thing, a thing. There's some other things, and that's more or less it. So carbine, uh, pistol, four o'clock holster, so I can take my sidecar off, put on a four o'clock uh, armor and helmet, and then I can have other stuff in here if I need to, in a normal duffel bag that I can just carry, throw it in the car, uh, have all my stuff. It's kind of like a firefighter. Um, back when I was a firefighter, we had our big, uh, I guess they were called uh, bunker bags or turnout bags, can't remember what they were called, but basically everything's in there. Your boots with your pants folded up over them, your helmet, your jacket, your gloves, your Nomex uh, is what we had, and we would just throw that in the back of the car, it's there, we're done, we can pull it out and get all of our stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think it's a good option to have. It's a good, a good thing to have prepared. What I was talking about on an Instagram live that I did earlier this week is every single one of your guns should have the capability of going into a bag to be transported from point A to point B without people realizing you have a firearm. So not a Pelican, unless you have a, one thing, kind of going back to spray painting logos, if I was really genius, I would take my big Pelican I travel with, which has no stickers on it, um, and I would actually put like B&H on it. I would put Canon. I put Sony. I would put camera stickers on it, and everyone would be like, oh, you're like a film guy, right? And I could be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I do film stuff for my job, which is true. And uh, we use these Sony cameras and tripods, and you know, I can, I can say all this stuff to make them think that, but in reality, there's like five rifles and you know, multiple pistols and armor and all that cool stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely more camera stuff on Pelicans, less gun stuff. It would definitely help. I just have nothing on my Pelican. And I got into an elevator at one point. I was on a trip. I was at this resort thing. And 
a couple of the guys in the elevator were like, so you got golfing gear in there? And they kind of looked at me and I was like, yeah, yeah, golfing stuff. I'm sure they suspected because, I mean, I was the only one at that resort, obviously not there to play golf. And because uh, I just wasn't wearing shorts, which again, gray man, I wasn't probably blending in the best. I wasn't wearing shorts and a Hawaiian shirt. I was going to a range to train an apartment and work with some people. And so I had my jeans on, uh, my sneakers on. I did have a button shirt. I probably blended in okay. I just didn't look like I was there to party. I was there to work. And so I definitely uh, gave myself away a little bit. And they probably suspected too that I had guns in there, not golfing stuff. So uh, what type of carbine? It was a 416 with a collapsed stock. So it's a 10.4. Uh, the stock gets it a little shorter. In a bag of that size though, uh, it does mean I can carry a few different guns in it. I'm not constrained to a smaller bag because it is a little bigger and that's nice. Sig Rattler. So the Sig Rattler is actually one of the cooler guns on the market as far as having some capability and lethality while having it be tiny. I've shot them a little bit. I don't own one, but again, it's like a four and a half, five inch barrel. Uh, do 300 blackout, not 5.56 and uh, you'll be set. Ragnarok for staccato. Eh, eh. Good question for Isaac. Or email CS. They're listening right now. You can ask them right here. You can ask Caleb, most likely, or Kyle. Uh, they'll let you know right here. <laughs> Nods in your car. Uh, on certain trips, I'll have night vision, yes, but that's not something I drive with every day when I like go to Nashville. Um, when every time, pretty much every time I go into town, I will, I will always have medical in the car. Every, both of my cars have medical in them. I will chuck a rifle in there of some sort, a 10-3, a 300 blackout. I'll have an extra, at least one extra magazine with it just sitting next to it. So it's as simple as grab rifle, magazine, back pocket, done. I'm not worrying about putting on a plate carrier or a helmet or a chest rig. Um, if things were different in Nashville right now, like let's say there's a ton of civil unrest or I'm going somewhere to you know pick up one of my friends and things are weird, I would probably have armor on the seat next to me. I'd be wearing a chest rig potentially. Like I'd have more stuff with me. So your, your, your kind of threat level is gonna dictate some of that. Or if you even risk going out in the first place. Um, but yeah, just rifle, magazine, you know, go out for a date, uh, have that there. Um, there have been shootings on interstates where traffic's pile up and people have actually like shot folks. So don't think, man, it's so stupid to have a truck gun. I mean, last year, y'all definitely saw with some of the unrest and some of the blocked traffic and some of the mobs that like, yeah, things can go sideways real quick while you're in your car. And anything you have in your car, that's all you have. Um, you're probably not able to get home and kit up and then go back there. Whatever you have in the car is what you have. So uh, I fully support having uh, a rifle in the car. I fully support having magazines and other support gear. Uh, I see no reason not to, um, unless maybe there's some risk levels as far as your vehicle being searched and things like that. So, um, just things to think about. What vehicle do you drive? Uh, my work car is a 4Runner that's kitted out that people recognize. So I have another car that's not as recognizable. That's n more normal. So, um, uh, modern drive-bys are in freeways. Yep, yep, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Do you a blackout worth it when unsuppressed? Yes, I think it is. Um, you still can do a lot with subsonic ammo or even supersonic ammo. Um, I should actually, you know what I should do? I should clean up my, I just need to clean up the war comp on my BCM. I should actually run some stuff with that unsuppressed because that's a tiny little gun once you, once you fold it up. Um, that's what I should do. I should do some 300 blackout content unsuppressed short barrel at the distance, 200 meters, 100 meters, uh, 50 meters, and just do some stuff. I think it'd be great. Two magazines attached to each other. Yeah, so that's something that's actually really cool. If you pick up your rifle and you have something like a Magpul D60, I would recommend that over a Surefire 60. Um, now you have quite a bit of ammo on the gun without having to worry about picking up other ammo. Um, the Ready Mag system, which is something that was a big thing, like I want to say a decade plus ago, two decades ago, where it, it's a little magazine carrier on the side of your rifle. They're in the Magpul videos that hold an extra magazine. Uh, stuff like that's actually really cool. It just means you have extra weight on the gun when you pick it up, but it's actually super rad because then you have two mags and you're, you're, you're done. <sighs> so anyway, um, zipper ready rig win. Oh, in the front? Eh, there's all sorts of patrol rigs you can get for that. I don't think I would do one with a zipper in the front. Placard support, yes. Zipper, and probably not. So, more medical content. I'd like to find the right people to come in and do that, but I'm being really, really picky because I've been burned so far by like three or four different people as far as content and publicity, so I'm not going to just take anyone. I got to be really careful about that. So, 
Uh, how do you suggest securing a rifle in a car for quick access? So for me, it's generally speaking on the front seat of my car, passenger. If I get out of the car to go to a restaurant or I get out of the car to go to do something or whatever, you know, if I'm leaving the car there all day, I probably won't have a rifle in it. If I'm there for like a couple hours and then I'm driving home, I'll just put a jacket over it, maybe move it to the floorboards and that's it. Like I don't, I don't have a safe for it. I'm not required to have a safe for it here in Tennessee. Uh, I'm not trying to hide it in a compartment or break it up into every single piece. I'm just there in the floorboards, jacket on top. I'm going to be in there for a couple hours. Um, you know, there's always that possibility of my house getting broken into, my car getting broken into. Uh, if you're super worried about that, then yeah, don't have a gun. But I'm also going to prioritize having a gun over some of that risk. Um, and that's just something that you are going to have to deal with as far as some of that risk of, oh no, a gun stolen or whatever. So that's what I, that's what I do. Uh, I was able to show a little bit about your other vehicle. Eh, a little bit, but it's pretty, it's a pretty normal car truck thing. Um, your thoughts on the clutch belt. The clutch belt is pretty cool. I haven't seen a whole lot of used people use them. I think Vertex is now making it for them. Uh, they moved all that over to them. Um, that is pretty cool. It lets you carry a little bit more stuff. Um, I've used them. I don't think it's not anything that I particularly need. Like if I want a bunch of extra kit, I put on a ready rig and I still have my sidecar and I'm done. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily something that, uh, uh, as, as far as what I need needs to, um, needs, needs something like that. Uh, strap a saw to the roof. Absolutely. So uh, our AC one's coming back. The answer is yes. We're spinning up production and we're putting a lot of work into that. And we actually were spending a good amount of time talking about that whole thing today. So yes, they will. Do I win? I have no idea, but yes. Trust me, I wish I had them tomorrow. I wish I had 10,000. That was actually a conversation today. How many do we need right now to satisfy demand? And it's a very high number, which would also take a long time to get made. It'll be back. I just don't know when. 300 barrel, blackout barrel length recommendation. Most companies uh, are selling nine inch 300 blackouts. I have a Seekins eight inch. I had a, or have a Roscoe seven inch. And then the MCXs are, the short ones are 6.75. Uh, I'm not sure what the Honey Badger is, but anywhere in there, six to nine, anywhere in there and you're good. Um, I actually am experimenting with zeros. I actually think uh, I'll be shooting my 300 blackout in the match here in two weeks in uh, Utah, not my 10.3556. I think I'm just going to shoot 300 blackout because why not? Um, but I have to mess with my zeros a little bit because I do have to shoot to 200. I could shoot supersonic ammo, but I'm zeroing for one, not the other. So there's a bunch of stuff you kind of have to worry about a little bit, a little more than like a standard 5.56 rifle. So 300 blackout, there's a little bit more learning and a little more understanding you have to have your holds and like all that subs versus supers. Do you do a swaparoo? Do you whatever uh, to actually um, get the, the, your, the best hits out of that gun, zeroing and all that good stuff. So I got to play with that a little more uh, tomorrow probably. Uh, the BRN 180 looks really cool, especially as a more uh, inexpensive sort of folding MCX kind of a gun. I don't have one. I've heard they recoil a little bit, but it is a piston gun. They do generally recoil in some ways a little more than a DI. So, I mean, sure. I don't know if it's more than like an MCX. Uh, I'd like to get one at some point, but um, I don't need one right now. I've got MCXs. So I'm going to the uh, Cobalt Kinetics match in Utah. We're actually sponsoring it too. Yes, I'll be streaming on Twitch after this. I might do a, a hybrid stream where I stream here for an hour, Armory Twitch stream for an hour where I can actually show all this stuff. Because if you guys want to see this, I'm going to go to twitch.tv slash and I'll actually show all the guns in these bags because I can't do that here. But anyway, um, and then actually stream some Tarkov tonight. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what kind of emails and stuff I have to take care of tonight. <clears throat> Um, Midwest Industries rails, good. Uh, some of their rails are good. Uh, some of their MCX rails have some weird tolerancing. Uh, I've, I've had plus and minuses on them. Olight on a rifle. Uh, if you want to create a long, uh, explosive device that you can, uh, breach with, absolutely. Uh, but I don't really recommend it that much. I've literally seen it cause issues on rifles and all sorts of scorch marks and stuff. Would you pay $4,000 for an MCX with the current state of things? Unfortunately, that price keeps going up. I remember a few months ago, I was looking at MCXs. They were like 3,200, 3,400. Uh, they are about four grand now. You can get conversion uppers for like 2,500. You have to substitute everything else. Um, 
it really depends on you know what your income is, what you really want. If you really want it and you can afford it, absolutely go and buy one. I don't think MCXs are coming back anytime soon for the just the population to circulation. And even if SIG dropped, say, 500 MCXs uh, on their website to distributors, uh, we would see those going straight to Gunbroker and still getting flipped for 3,800. I don't think the MCX price is coming down anytime soon. So if you have money and you just want one because you know you can fold the brace or fold the stock, suppress it, do all that cool stuff, then yeah, go get one. But that is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. It really depends on where you're at as far as what you make, what can you afford in your situation. I would not recommend it to a new gun owner who's like, I don't have a gun, I need a gun. And I'm like, yeah, go spend four grand on an MCX. And I wouldn't do that. <clears throat> so, uh, AR-15 or MCX. Uh, I would say an AR-15, you're going to save a lot of money. An MCX right now for a first rifle, like I said, is exorbitantly expensive. So don't do that. Uh, I carry an M16 cricket knife, but it's just for uh, opening opening boxes. It's not for anything cool. So I have a gun for that. Um, anyway, which I know isn't the right argument, but um, get a flare launcher that shoots O-lights. I like that a lot, actually. Um, do you carry plus P? Yes, I carry Spear 124 grain hollow point ammo. Uh, I do not recommend you carry rip ammo ever. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely carry plus P ammo of some, of some sort, hollow point ammo. Um, there's a lucky gunner has a really good study on that. Definitely check that out. So, um, anyway, I'm looking for gray man questions. Fanny packs. If you want to look like Dwayne Johnson, absolutely. They're fanny packs, especially if they're like spiritist ones in multicam black give you away. They're not that gray man. Um, <laughs> sorry. Now that's a knife. Um, going back here. Clench picks. Yeah, now everyone's going to come in with their all their knife stuff. I'm not a knife fighter. I'm not a professional knife enthusiast. I've never claimed to be, never will claim to be. I do gun stuff and I'm a businessman. Uh, there's all sorts of cool people out there doing knife stuff. Go hit them up. There's also people out there making $2,000 knives, $10,000 knives, $200 knives. This is a $30 knife. Uh, go hit up all those people for knowledge. Uh, not me. I'm not a knife guy. Don't ask me about knives. This is what I carry. This should tell you enough about me uh, as far as being a knife guy. All right. So just to get that out there, okay? Uh, rip ammo is great if all you're going to do is shoot watermelons. Flag patches for gray man. Yeah, so a big question, and this, this is important, so we'll cover this real quick, is what do you do if you are in a situation where you draw your handgun, you grab a rifle, you're dealing with a threat out in public uh, where, where it is a little different than your own house. If you're in your own house, you have you know, a little different, you have some buffer between when you're done with the situation or you're resolving the situation and law enforcement arrives. Give or take seven to 15 minutes. Where I, not where I live, but in my county, it can be upwards of 40 minutes. Um, but let's say in public. Uh, that is a big question. How do you properly identify yourself as a good guy? You know, uh, so you don't get a blue on blue or a green on green situation. Uh, one thing that I think is actually really great is uh, people have printed off like civilian tags and security. Security is probably not a bad one. Just don't do not do a police tag because that's impersonating an officer. Um, but frankly, having a big oversized American flag patch, if, if for whatever reason you have time to put on um, a plate carrier, um, this could, it's very bright, it's very visible. Um, most of the kinds of folks that are uh, committing acts of terror domestically on our own soil uh, or active shooters and all sorts of uh, evil lawless people uh, don't generally want to fly this flag on their blacked out you know kit um, they're not really doing that so and a lot of law enforcement do stuff like this anyway so odds are you'll get mistaken as an authority by having an American flag and in that particular situation would actually work in your favor so I'm a big fan of having big color American flags um, there's a, an SF buddy of mine who said that something that they would do, they'd have all their man jams on uh, over in Afghanistan or Iraq, wherever it was. Uh, they would actually have a ball cap folded up somewhere in their kit with a big flag on it. And if something happened, they'd quickly put their hat on. Because uh, over there, kind of like what I talked about earlier, people don't really wear ball caps um, in the Middle East unless you're like an American. Uh, so that right there is an indicator of, hey, we're on the same side, we're doing a thing. Um, and so this is, to me, this is similar. You know, if you pull out kit with a big flag on it on both sides, um, your chances of being mistaken as a threat go down quite a lot. So, boom. I'm pretty sure these are in stock. We do sell these for that reason. 
Plus we're Patriots and all that good stuff. So uh, the other one is like security patches are probably pretty good. Um, just don't have police. Civilian is kind of weird. Um, I don't think that would really do anything in a situation where cops are responding. Um, but security, technically, you know, they may think you work there at the mall or at the store, and then later they find out you don't. But at that point, they haven't shot you, and so, hey, you win. So, um, but it is definitely, uh, definitely a thing. So, when you guys restocking? Oh, are they not in stock? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about stock questions anymore, guys. I get, I get this much of an update, like, a couple times a week on, like, the big stuff, and I have to go work on the big stuff. Flag is not in stock. Okay, well, good news is, guys, there are oversized American flags all over the place. You do not have to buy from T-Rex Arms. Go to eBay. You can pick them up. If it ends up coming from China, though, which is a little ironic and a little funny, um, you may wait forever. It took me forever to get that USEC uh, patch on uh, that there because it came from overseas without me realizing it. Um, but, yeah, definitely, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Flags are on stock. Well, there's all kinds. Uh, militia, probably not the patch you want to have until we redefine that word, uh, unfortunately. That's probably not the patch you want to have on your kit. Um, if that shouldn't be the case, you should be able to. That word should be completely kosher, understood, um, the duties of people within that. But uh, as of right now, the word has been redefined as a lot of other things, which until we uh, re-educate and kind of teach people what that means, I would not use that word um until we actually can uh, fix it that's not a great idea going back to gray man kind of gives you away unfortunately so uh, that's why i generally try not to use that word too much i wish it wasn't the case it's just how it is um uh printing when concealed how important and how to counter so this is the thing about printing again going back to gray man it's a perfect thing uh when you put on your gun and you look down and you're like, man, I'm really printing. For one, from your perspective, looking straight down at the gun, you can see a lot more of what's going on than the average person walking by at an angle, you know, parallel with kind of where the gun is. Uh, you also know you're carrying a gun. You're thinking about it. You're probably a little concerned about it. The average person walking around on their phone will have no idea. I can literally print with a t-shirt, like creating an obvious shelf uh, of my firearm. I could walk through a Walmart or wherever else and no one would have an idea. Um, I mean, I carried throughout uh, on my work trip I just did. Um, I wasn't concealed super amazingly. I did have a flannel shirt on, which does help break up some of the outline. Um, but no one knew I had a gun. And no one ever said it. Nobody looked down there. I mean, you can always tell if someone, you know, you're wearing appendix and someone's over here and they kind of like, or looking down, you can tell, uh, but nobody ever looked. Uh, no one ever thought about it. No one ever considered it, I guess, because I was in a state where you're not supposed to carry a handgun. Um, so they just assumed I wasn't, and you know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, you definitely, uh, an ATF patch, oh, an AFT. Yeah, I guess you could wear an AFT one since that's not an actual department, and you probably couldn't get slapped with impersonating an officer. Oh, that's actually a great idea. I don't know, I don't actually don't know if it's a great idea. I'm sure they could be like, well, you were trying, it's like saying a uh, Polish force on your car because it looks like police. Or like the, my favorite is uh, if you're yelling at someone, you say, please stop. And it sounds like police, but then you can be like, no, I wasn't saying police. I was saying, please. But in the heat of the moment, it sounds like police. Again, I'm not recommending you do that. It's just funny uh, as far as being mistaken as an authority during the, during the situation. So it's pretty funny. A lot of companies are making camp, earth tone, molly, military stuff, and it's becoming more accepted. Yes, uh, I think Nike has a multi-cam bags, Woodland, yeah. Certain camos are becoming a lot more kosher. Uh, Gucci companies, um, I, there was a, I saw a while ago a Louis Vuitton scarf in DCU. Um, there are absolutely, you know, companies taking these camo patterns and making them more mainstream. Uh, it's my opinion, though, that they're not mainstream enough, as in enough people are wearing them, uh, that you won't attract suspicion. So as much as I love that Toyota made an FDE truck that every single tactical guy goes and buys, I know I'm really hounding on everyone right now, um, it's not mainstream enough for people to not see it and be like, gun guy, NRA sticker on the back, I bet, you know. Um, and same with some of those patterns, like Woodland. Like I went to, uh, I, was, I, was, I was shopping somewhere before you know, everything got weird. And uh, Banana Republic had a, has a Woodland line. And I was like, you know what? I want to buy that hoodie because it was kind of fun. And 
I've, I've only worn it like once, but uh, woodland camo, you know, obviously not legit fabric, you know, it's not Cordura or, you know, anything real, um, but it was straight up a Banana Republic woodland hoodie, t-shirt hoodie. So some of that stuff is becoming more mainstream. I just don't think it's um, mainstream enough for me to want to wear it knowingly being like, I don't think anyone will suspect me because Louis Vuitton makes a DCU scarf. So I'm going to wear DCU today. Like, yeah, I don't think so. So, uh, concealed plate carrier. Uh, yeah, concealed plate carriers are great. Uh, Cry makes, Cry LVS, the, their plate carrier is pretty cool. The AC one that we make, the Spiritus one, uh, all of those like slick carriers that is like Velcro and Cordura and that's it on the front um, can be worn pretty easily uh, concealed. Granted, it also depends a little bit on what plates you put in them your overall size. Like it's pretty hard for me to conceal a plate carrier because I'm a smaller dude. I can do size small plates e easier um, with a slick carrier, but I do have to tailor my clothes around it. I wear a jacket, something like that. I'm not gonna do that with a t-shirt. That's just not gonna happen. Or even soft armor, 3A soft armor. I can't really do that either. So, um, but lots of, there's a lot of cool slick carriers out there. So. Uh, first Spear makes one. Yep, that one's pretty cool. Uh, pretty much everyone now, and again, going back to like culture and low vis and all stuff driving, uh, 20 years ago, there were not a lot of low vis carrier options. There were some prototypes that were made for the military. There was some stuff made for like dudes running around in man jams. Uh, Velocity had a cool little white one. Um, I want to say uh, Eagle or Parcelet had one at some point. Uh, Diamondback, not Diamond, yeah, Diamondback, not Diamondback Tactical, but. Another company, before they went out of business or got bought up, uh, they had one with side buckles that was super slick. Um, but now, like, every plate carrier out there, like, is a slick carrier, pretty much, unless you want to go get, like, a CPC or, you know, a cry carrier that's a big one. Uh, they're pretty much all little slick carriers. It's pretty cool. The culture definitely changes a lot. Is having handcuffs or flex cuffs. Again, there's a lot of legality with uh, detaining a person. Um you should look into that. But I don't think it's a bad option uh, to have that. And depending on the situation, it may not matter because, you know, it's so bad or dire that it's like, you know what, I don't care what the consequences are. I will deal with it because lives are what's important right now. And my legal court case can literally take a back seat. Um, but again, you should know the laws. Uh, but I, I think they could be a good option to have if you absolutely need them. But uh, just don't go around flex cuffing people thinking you can, because unfortunately that's not how it works. But uh, this is not uh, GTA, unfortunately. Um, so don't do that. <clears throat> um, do you only want uh, to gray man so your equipment doesn't get stolen? Uh, so no, I like being a gray man so that I'm not constantly being stared at or picked out as a gun nut. Uh, there are stories though of people noticing a gun nut and then specifically targeting their vehicle to steal their stuff. Um, that's poor operational planning too. Uh, you shouldn't want to get your gear stolen. Um, that's pretty lame and kind of sucks. Um, but it's also just, I don't like people, you know, knowing I have a gun or staring at me or staring at my Pelican or staring at my bags or keeping an eye. I just don't like it. You know, uh, right now though, it's not a problem if they do, I'm not breaking any laws. Um, but if we were in a situation of, say, mass civil disobedience or um, something worse, uh, it's quite possible they can't know I have a gun because uh, that could result in authorities uh, getting arrested and or other stuff and on and on and on and on, and on. So there's lots of reasons for it. Uh, there's lots of reasons to think about it uh, right now, even though right now we're not forced to do it. Unless you live in California, then it's a different story. Um, so, yeah. 100 grand night vision or that. Yeah, I don't travel with night vision unless I like really need to. And it's funny because I'll take nods with me on a trip, not use it. And then when I don't take nods on a trip, that's when I really need it. Funny how that works out. Stickers. I have no stickers on my car. None. Zero. Um, the T-Rex sticker is kind of fun because if you're in the know, you know our brand is still like small enough. People don't really know. It's just a T-Rex skull. Um, but eventually, you know, if we got bigger, uh, it's possible that people would recognize our sticker more and know that you have guns. And then at that point, uh, we basically have outed you all. It's kind of what it is. It kind of sucks. And then people know, well, T-Rex arms guns, um, they got a sticker on their car. So at some point, you may need to take your sticker off. Kind of funny to think about that, isn't it? So, 
Uh, building a 300 Blackout PW. Thoughts on the uh, Maxim versus... I, I prefer, if you can, a law folder uh, that folds gets the gun smaller overall than the retracting thing. The retracting thing doesn't have a lot of surface area for um, bracing to your arm putting in your shoulder. Um, so I don't like those as much as an actual folding like A3. So, but if you can't get a lot of folder, different story. So, uh, John Lovell has a video teaching people to find trucks that have guns in them. Yeah, a fascinating video, I'm sure. Um, I haven't seen it, but it does not surprise me he went out and made that and that's pretty cool. So anyway, well guys, here's what I'm gonna do. We're at about an hour. So that's just a few things on some gray man stuff, considerations, bags, uh, just overall concepts. Um, the, the, the funniest situations that I see on like Instagram and stuff are uh, instructors and big like hoorah dudes who talk about being all low vis and not wearing things that makes you stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, but then every time you see them posting stories out and about in public, they're wearing that exact same stuff. Um, you know, like UF Pro pants, multi-cam, you know, super tactical shirts and hats. And I'm like, well, it's obvious you don't, uh, you know, preach what you teach. Um, those are always the most funny to me. And I do see that quite a lot. Uh, you don't see a lot of guys who are really living a gray man life. Uh, I was actually just recently at an event, a charity event for a uh, special operations charity. And it was actually pretty cool because I'm sitting in the room and I saw just a lot of normal dudes you know, I, I couldn't tell that they were operators, um, but they had them all come to the front. They were like, everyone who's special operations come to the front. And about, I want to say 90% of the guys up front, which is about half of the room, you would never have guessed they were special operations guys. They did not have crazy stuff on them indicating it. Uh, they weren't trying to flex the, you know, their service or their units. They were just wearing normal clothes. One guy uh, looked like a cowboy. Um, I thought he was like an oil guy, uh, but he ended up being a sergeant major and all this stuff. So I was like, oh, that's, that's super rad. Um, granted, it definitely depends on like what branches and what units are talking about and how much they want to like show that and whatnot, culture and military stuff. But um, it's just super cool. Like those guys just like wear their normal clothes. Like they don't, they don't try to ascribe to be part of a certain culture. They, they go to work and then they do their normal stuff. Um, and quite often you see, you know, civilians who want to try to go be over there when in reality, all those guys are trying to be civilians. Um, it's kind of funny how that works. So, uh, I'm a big, you know, one of the reasons early on that I was like, I'm not going to wear tactical pants when I go to the range. I'm not going to wear BDUs. I'm not going to wear multi-cam is I just wanted to show people you can go and shoot in jeans. Like you, you don't have to get special pants, like just wear your normal stuff, wear your sneakers, probably don't wear flip flops. That's not a good idea. Um, but you don't have to wear all this super cool tactical weird stuff to go shoot guns, uh, carry a pistol every day, like just be a normal person and no one's going to think, you know, differently of you or think that you're carrying a gun because of it because you look like a normal person just walking around doing your thing going about your life so with all that said i hope some of that was helpful guys i know it's a little rambly as many of these lives are trying to get through questions and stuff but i'm going to go over to twitch here in about five minutes that's twitch.tv slash aimbotkin where we can keep talking about this for a little bit uh look at some bags actually look at some loadouts because that's pretty cool and uh show you guys how some of these things fit in some of these and kind of how they work so take care see you all around thanks so much